Howdy folks, it's Nathan. Welcome back to my channel. Appreciate you stopping by. Um, just get some housekeeping out of the way. I've got my Brevia tomato in it. I am smoking some Baker Street from Country Squire. A really nice blend. Good smoky Latakia in there. With the temperature starting to cool down, it makes it a little nice smoke. With it, got a dram of some wild turkey. Go by the grocery store and thought, you know, I haven't had one some in a while since I've started filling this bottle with all my sawdust. It's the man version of sand art. <laughs> so I picked up a bottle. And normally I, I tend to be more of a scotch guy, but this stuff's really good. Surprisingly so. So, I figured I would get my two cents in the video response, I guess. Um, so, Greg Tunnel did a video where put out some positions on the machine that are actually fairly common. Um, um, and admittedly some of my positions are not widely held. But that's fine. of our faith is
God was never going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah with Lot in there um, because Lot knew the Lord. He, we can read in the New Testament that Sodom and Gomorrah vexed Lot's righteous soul. Um, so we know that Lot was a righteous man living in uh, an absolutely horrible arena, much like what we are these days. Um, you know, but God was always going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, and he had those, his two angels with him to go to fetch Lot and his family out of there. Um, so, um, you know, it, it's, you know, you can see in one perspective from a human point of view where you know, it changed his mind, but Abraham didn't change his mind. He was going to do it regardless. Uh, Nineveh was going to be destroyed whether uh, Jonah uh, prophesied to Nineveh or not. And we know that because years later Nineveh was destroyed. They were already judged and God was proclaiming using Jonah judgment. Uh, one of the main purposes for the um, inclusion of Jonah in scripture is prophetical uh, that that Jonah was the sign of the Lord's death, burial, and resurrection three days in the whale, or fish, or whatever, whatever the fish was, um, and then rises out. Um, and and that was what the, the Lord said, the only sign, when he was talking to the Pharisees and the scribes, he said, no, the only thing that you're going the only sign that's going to be given to you is the sign of Jonah. And so there's, there's a big purpose for Jonah. Um, you know, it's, you know, I think that's the big thing right there. Um, you know, if we consider Pharaoh, uh, God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Pharaoh didn't have a choice in the matter of whether or not he was going to let Moses go. It was continual, you know, that God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Um, and the, the times where he didn't harden Pharaoh's heart were the times where Pharaoh was more than willing to show forth who he was. Uh, and that was one who absolutely hated God. Um, you know, we can talk about all sorts of examples uh, about that. Um, but the big thing for me, when, I look, when I'm looking through the book of Romans, uh, Romans 3 teaches us that there's none righteous, no, not one. And this is speaking about absolutely every human being that ever existed. Uh, we have Old Testament scripture that tells us that uh, our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. And those righteousnesses, that, that phrase filthy rags, is, you know, in, in the Hebrew, is actually can be translated a clotted menstrual cloth. It's absolutely disgusting. And common English tends to want to eh, not, not go so extreme with with it, but God doesn't mince words. In comparison to you know, the smallest of God's acts the, there's our righteousness is right there. You know, diseased, gross you know, good for absolutely nothing, and no life in them whatsoever. So um when we uh, look further in Romans 7, uh, you know, we can praise him that he's made us righteous, the righteousness of him. So there's a change that has occurred, and it occurred not in our own personal Damascus Road experience, you know, and not when we chose to you know, accept Jesus Christ. Um, I, I believe that's a benefit in our walk but it's not an indicator of our end point. Um, our end point is guaranteed already by Jesus Christ. Uh, to say that we did 
anything to affect that is to annul the finished work of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and that's taught in Galatians. Um, but when we get to Romans 7, we find out that there's this law in us, um, or the, the, there are these two natures in us. Um, and it says, in, in starting in verse 13, Has then what is good become death to me? Certainly not. And that's an emphatic negative in the Greek. Uh, it says, But sin, that it might appear sin, was producing death in me through what is good. So, I mean, that's... We're, we're going we're, we're gonna to see this trail of words here that are, it's very difficult to unravel but even if I were to think that I'm doing something good sin is actually working in me through that to produce death and not death you know eternally but it produces dead works um, so that sin through the commandment might become exceedingly sinful for we know that the law is spiritual but I am carnal sold under sin for what I am doing I do not understand and so I mean we, we all are as 1 Corinthians 13 tells us we are all looking through a glass darkly it's very difficult to understand God and it takes a lot of time in the scriptures to be able to flesh some of these things out and some and for some folks he doesn't let them flesh that out he has other blessings for them um, you know and it, and it does lead to disagreement but God intends that too you know he's a two-edged sword and not just to separate us from sin, but he, he divides the body as he sees fit for his good purposes. Um, <clears throat> the, the passage goes on, For what I will to do, okay, there, there's, there's the will. What I will to do, that I do not practice, but what I hate, that I do. So right there, it eliminates free will. It, it's it's absolutely impossible uh, for us to uh, do it. We may have the idea that it comes through as as that as our own decisions and stuff like that, but it's it's not. And it goes and it describes it even further. Um, if then that I do what I will not to do, I agree then that with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer. I who do it but sin that dwells in me so sin plays a huge activity in our actions our physical actions today uh, for I know that in me that is in my flesh nothing good dwells and that's a really didactic statement I mean that's a really strong strong statement um, you know for to will is present with me but how to perform what is good I do not find so it's rather impossible for us in the flesh to do anything good it uh, and and I find that it's more more times than not if there is anything that I do that glorifies God it's because him working in me and not because I think that I'm doing anything great because uh, I, I, I know I don't. It um, goes on, it says, um, For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. So now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. So our will is completely captive. And it's, um, and it's captive to 
this sin nature that dwells in us while at the same time we are struggling you know we have this the spirit that the Lord has bestowed upon us that is battling that and that's our new creation which he's made us so the former things will be remembered no more because he's given us that new creation so you know, in Romans 8 verse 8 says those who are in the flesh cannot it's a real strong negative again cannot please God and you know where we can be God fearing men and women but if we can't please God then the question becomes then what hope do we have and the only thing that we can rely on is the finished work of Jesus Christ who is our Lord who is God who is sovereign in all things and doesn't relinquish that sovereignty for anything he is um, you know yeah, and, Gre and Greg's referenced this before too um, you know he that is um, uh, sorry neighbor just lost some balloons that they paid a bunch of money for Um, so I kind of totally lost my track of thought. So, you know, it's a, uh, you know, and, and, and it's a hard thing to study. It's a hard thing to reconcile, and I totally understand that because I want to get up and get going and rare and do things as well. Um, you know, but. At the same time, I also understand that that, that the Lord's working. Philippians uh, teaches us that it is God who works in us to will and to do of His good pleasure, and that doesn't make us robots. Um, it, what he what he's saying is that that work in us, He's strengthening us spiritually, so that the new creation in Christ Jesus that we have, that He's given to us becomes stronger and that that um, that becomes our desire or that is that becomes a waking desire it's always present um, that that he's made us such and he is and it doesn't make us robots because well if we've been given the will of God then our own personal desires are separate from our earthly desires and it becomes us wanting to do his will so we are actually doing what we desire it just so happens that what we desire is in line with God in that new creation and that new creation cannot sin absolutely cannot uh, and that's in first John chapter 3 verse 9 those who are born of God uh, have his seed abiding in him and he cannot sin so you know there's our relief uh, there, there's our uh, there, there's our reason for praise is that all the evil that it work, is worked through us in our attempt to do good our relief is an all knowing God who sovereignly protects us because he's given us his Holy Spirit uh, and, and the will of his spirit so that's a brief attempt and that and I do mean brief because this is it's a lot of study that goes into something like this um, but it's something I think we can rejoice over that we don't have to work for our redemption our redemption is completely secure we can't lose it uh, it's in him totally and so what's left well what's left is to praise the Lord you know, and that's what he teaches praise God in all things I say again or re rejoice in the Lord again I say rejoice we are to praise him for all things uh, it teaches us a lot of that in Psalms um, 
and elsewhere in the scriptures. You know, so all glory to him for everything. And you know, I appreciate the conversation, Greg. You know, one of the things that I need to work on myself is being able to have disagreements like this because you know it's it's tough to work that out and work it out also in the same vein of friendship and love and I know that we share a bond in the Lord Greg and I rejoice in that wholeheartedly uh, so I appreciate the opportunity to fellowship with you in the disagreement that we that we have and do so without the drama because I know there were some drama in the comment section which is regrettable um, you know, but all that said the Lord's good and there's a lot to rejoice in there so I know this has gone a little long um, but I figured I had to put my two cents in for whatever that's worth leave your thoughts in the comments um, you know love you all dearly uh, and you're not going to make me mad with your positions you know yeah, I may think you're a little kooky <laughs> but then again so am I anyway take care everybody love y'all dearly we'll see you later grace and peace to you